Hello everyone. So my name is Dr. Bishwadeep Das. I'm a professor in biotechnology from KIT deemed to be University Bhuvaneshwar. So I'm going to present my presentation on nanobiosensors and their applications, especially in terms of clinical diseases. So let us go to the first slide. What is a biosensor? Basically, before going into the nanobiosensor, we should know what is a biosensor. A biosensor can be defined as a sensing device or a measurement system designed specifically for estimation of a material by using the biological interactions and then assessing these interactions into a readable form with the help of a transduction and electrochemical interpretation or electromechanical interpretation. On the right side is a, is a kind of a, a flow diagram of how a biosensor structure and how it works. As you can see, we have targets and it can be any kind of particular target like uh, a pathogen or a metabolite or a ligand, whatever target you want. Then we uh, have some uh, bioreceptor or we can say as a biocatalyst that interacts with the target such as in this case, a particular form of uh, uh, protein or a ligand or something that will interact with the target. And then this interaction is uh, in fact captured in a uh, unique device called as transducer. So what is a transducer is a kind of a, a sensing device that senses this bio uh, mechanism between the target and the bioreceptor. And uh, then it uh, converts that particular signal into a electrical signal that is eventually read by a digital reader, for example, an LED screen or any kind of uh, flow reader or a fluorometer, anything like that. So basically, it is the, this biosensor is made up of uh, mainly it has a target and a bioreceptor. So bas basically, it is made up of a bioreceptor, a transducer, and then it has a digital reader. So these are the main components of a biosensor. Then what are nanobiosensors? So nanobiosensors are basically the sensors which are made of nanomaterials and interestingly these are not the specialized sensors which can detect the uh, nanoscale events and happenings or we can say nanobiosensor is a biosensor that works on a nanoscale size. So in general biosensor the biocatalyst could be an organism or any kind of uh, a whole enzyme or something like that. But in nano sensors, we use very particular uh, uh, exudates or you may say cell components. For example, we can use a specific part of an enzyme to act as a sensor or we can use a particular part of an organism. Let us say we tag the mitochondria of a bacteria like E. coli to a particular nano uh, material like zinc, nano zinc or nano uh, gold and then the entire system works. Okay. So in the, in the nano sensor it helps the biosensor to become more miniaturized or more minimized and it can work at a more lower level. Nanotechnology has bestowed some highly exciting ingredients for the improvement of sensing phenomenon. The use of diverse nanomaterials ranging from nanoparticles, nanotubes, nanorods, nanowires has enabled faster detection and its reproducibility in a much better way. Mechanism of nanobiosensor, how does it work? So basically the mechanism is mostly based on the bioreceptor and the transducer. So the transduction mechanisms are responsible for converting the responses of bioanalyte interactions in an identifiable and reproducible manner using the conversion of a specific biochemical reaction energy into an electrical form through the use of transduction mechanism. What does this entire sentence mean? It means that we have a bioreceptor, for example, of a, like a kind of a particular cell component or a cell organism's uh, uh, component. So basically that particular component is conjugated or you can say tagged to a specific nanoparticle and then that nanoparticle will kind of read the interaction when that particular cell component interacts with the target and then it converts into a uh, electrical signal eventually it can be read in a digital reader. Nanomaterials can be wonderful incumbents in this dimension as they have high surface area to volume ratios which allow the surface to be used in a better and more diversely functional manner. Moreover, their electrochemical 
or electromechanical properties are the wonderful asset for the biosensor technology because this is where we develop the lab on a chip or microfluidic device or you can say like lateral flow chromatographic assay now components of nanobiosensor as we already have discussed these are the main components a bioreceptor a material which analyzes and basically this is the biocatalyst which can be a a uh, microorganism component or it can be any kind of enzyme component or any particular kind of uh, uh, biological uh, uh, compound then uh, we have a transducer it's a kind of a uh, device that converts the biological interaction into a uh, digital or you can say electrical interaction it's a signal converter or you can say signal conversion device and then finally we have a detector that detects this particular uh, signal in the and reproduces in the form of a visual uh, display it could be a led device or a fluorometer or a uv reader or whatever it is could be a just a kind of a uh, empirical uh, meter so a little bit about uh, each of these a bioreceptor is a component of a biosensor which serves as a template for the material to be detected there can be several materials which can be used as bioreceptor for example algae proteins fungi and many other uh, uh, microorganisms we have a lot of algal biosensors might have heard for detection of environmental pollutants next one is the transducer as the name uh, suggests it means trans means change and ducer means energy so transducer basically converts one form of energy into another this first form is biochemical in nature as it is generated by the specific interaction between the bioanalyte and bioreceptor while the second form is usually electrical in nature this conversion of biochemical response into electrical signal is achieved through transducer example is electrochemical optical thermal or gravimetric transducer detector this is the last component which receives the electrical signal from the transducer and uh, amplifies it suitably so that corresponding response can be read and studied properly it is basically the last part and it just helps in visualization of the signal why nanomaterials are intended to be used in making biosensors this is very one particular uh, question that, that could anyone uh, ask so basically the size constant of these materials that means the low size the small size because they're in the nanometer scale makes them very special as they have most of the constituent atoms located at or near their surface and have all vital physicochemical properties highly different from the same materials at the bulk scale so the, the 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 thing is that the surface area is much high and they have all the atoms located on the surface area compared to the bulk scale where the entire compound is homogeneously uh, kind of distributed all the atoms the main atoms uh, so hence they can play very efficient roles in the sensing mechanism of the biosensor technology integrated devices of the nanomaterials with electrical systems give rise to nano electromechanical systems or nems which are very active in their electrical transduction mechanisms so all these features make nanomaterials very effective to be used in biosensors now we'll give an example of a particular disease which has been detected by biosensor so since i have been working on this disease since a long time so i would like to talk about a little bit on this particular disease which is dengue dengue is a vector borne viral uh, infection that endangers an estimated 2.5 billion people across the world especially in tropical and subtropical countries disease caused by dengue ranges from a relatively minor febrile illness to a life threatening condition characterized by extensive capillary leak there are, there are several forms of dengue there even though i have not mentioned but I, could, I would just like to highlight so you can have normal dengue fever like just a increase in body temperature with body aches or you can have dengue with warning signs signs and symptoms that include kind of a low platelet count and then petechia there will be redness in the eyes there will be more uh, achalasia and many other things and finally we have severe dengue where there is a severe hemorrhage and internal hemorrhage a lot of vascular permeability and it could lead to hospitalization these are some basic symptoms of dengue uh, normally how it starts it's all like having a very common fever chills sweating full body shaking and uh, sometimes it has diarrhea nausea vomiting headache joint pain petechia 
However, there are many other symptoms depending upon the stage of dengue. Like if it proceeds to severe dengue or dengue warning signs, there would be, there would be more symptoms. But these are the common symptoms that, I keep, that appear during dengue infection. Dengue virus nanobiosensor, uh, basically it consists of one of the nanobiosensor that has, has been developed for dengue virus consists of a quartz crystal microbalance that measures small difference in mass. Its sensors which generate an electrical current when hit by mechanical pressure are able to detect a minimal amount of molecules such as the dengue non-structural protein which is a kind of a marker to detect the presence of dengue virus in a particular sample. The protein reacts with bacterial cellulose nanocrystals on the surface of the device to indicate the presence of virus in a blood sample. So dengue is diagnosed by detecting NS1 in the membranes of virus infected cells days after disease onset. So this is one example where they have used bacterial cellulose nanocrystals that can bind to this NS1 and eventually can detect the, uh, this particular pathogen using an electrochemical device. Dengue virus biosensor, another type of biosensor, a serotype specific RNA biosensor was developed for the rapid detection of dengue virus by NJ in 2002, even though it is quite uh, old or early, but still it's a kind of a hallmark uh, method to develop, develop such biosensor. After RNA amplification, the biosensor allows the rapid detection of dengue virus RNA in only 15 minutes. Then the biosensor is portable, inexpensive and very easy to make it an ideal detection system for point of care and field application. The biosensor is coupled to the isothermal nucleic acid sequence based amplification or NASBA technique with which small amounts of virus RNA are amplified using a simple water bath. So this is one aspect of biosensor where it can be very portable, very inexpensive and also a point of care that means it can be uh, taken to rural areas anywhere in accessible areas and for the detection of dengue virus. Then uh, what is the specificity and uh, by nanobiosin application during the NASBA reaction a generic sequence is attached to all molecules dengue virus can be detected using fast 2 DNA probes and uh, using these two probes the biosensor is detected. On the right side we are showing the sensitivity or specific you can see how uh, different types of virus like uh, these are different samples starting from uh, a sample with as low as 0 0.0 micromolar concentration of virus to 10 micromolar concentration of virus and this is the graph how a biosensor can so a biosensor can read even the most uh, minimal amount of virus uh, present in a sample that is why uh, we consider as uh, a biosensor to be highly specific and uh, more advanced techniques are being used or being developed to further increase the sensitivity and specificity of nanobiosensors. So that is all I have for my presentation. I hope you liked it. Thank you. Thank you very much.